Goddess Buzzkills wrap up of 2023. I'm Liz Winstead, and not only am I joined by my co-host, Mojana Motel, we have the whole gang here to break down the best, the worst, and the weirdest abortion news of the year. Hey all, Moji here, and I have the honor, the thrill, and delight of introducing our steaming news dump team, Alyssa Alduki. What's going on? And Molly Gaby. Hi, honored to be out of the bathroom with yes. our co-hosts here. <laughs> it's a bonus. It's a, that's what it's we get for a bonus. Welcome we, to normal seating. I look forward to it every year. <laughs> Let you out of the shitter, which is amazing. <laughs> it's also fun just to be together. We never get to be together, no. so that's... That part feels awesome. But it's like every year we do this show and every year it is sort of hair wrenching, hair wrenching, if that's a word, yeah. to try to decide what stories are the best, what stories are the worst, what stories are the weirdest. So I always like to ask, what was the hardest part about narrowing it down to just three? Well, I had the best. And let me tell you, in post Row America... Not a huge selection of good stories <laughs> oh, right. oh, no. about abortion, huh. funnily enough. So my challenge was finding stories. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's like the best always has some ugly turn. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, this is great, but oh, but don't get too excited. Exactly. Like, it's or like, like this could have gone horribly wrong and it didn't. So it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Molly? Yeah, I kind of had a similar thing. Uh, I felt like I was a little bit on an acid trip because... <laughs> you had the weirdest. <laughs> I had the weirdest. So the, the stories made me like giggle, but at any moment it could turn dark. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it truly was inspiring in terms of comedy writing, I feel like, because the, the heightening that these people can do with their anti-abortion views, I just could never in a million years write the kind of law. I mean, just they just seem like a joke. And it feels like, too, that you have to have a soundbite because people think you're just making shit up. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And also the fact that, like... That's the baseline of reality with which people, it's like, there's no terra firma of like, we can all agree these things are at least crazy, right? And it's like, no, no, (laughs) No, that's true. No. Those things are true. Those things are absolutely true. And that's what's wild that they're like, say these things are absurd. And then you're just like, no one believes that. Right. I know. They assume it's a Mad Lib. It's a Mad Lib. And then they sit on top of Congress and they have a hearing and they say this shit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And Moji, you sort of had the terrible job of being the person delivering the three worst stories? Oh, that was easy. There was It was like the hardest part was just sort of like, which of this avalanche of terrible stories? Like, where do I pick? Where do I choose? This is like working this podcast every week. It's just fodder for the worst. Every week, it's It the feels worst. like it's just like, you know, diving for coins in an outhouse. That's <laughs> exactly how I would describe mm, it. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you Yum. got such a, an evocative phrase. Mm-hmm. Thank you. To, I'm to say that. here yeah, to that's help. Exactly what I got to so, stop leaving my coins in the outhouse. <laughs> Don't drop your coins in the outhouse. Maybe get a toilet. Yeah. That's not an outhouse. Oh, good point. That's a very good point. All right. So here's how the episode's going to go. You kind of get the idea. It's best, worst, weirdest. Each person has a category and they're going to give you their three, two, ones. And then we're going to give our hot takes. I am just going to be rifling hot takes because we only have three categories and I was more than happy to do less work than most (laughs) on this particular show. So Moji, we're going to kick it off with the worst just so it can kind of get better before then it gets weird. So I think, uh, what do you got? Take us in. I got a second runner up for the worst, right? Uh We we Mm -hmm. chose three and the second runner up is, uh, I just want to say the state of Texas, but to drill down, particularly the fact that people who have been pregnant in Texas and experience miscarriage or any sort of pregnancy difficulty are currently having to sue the state of Texas to just find out at what point in the line they can be saved. And it's always terrifying that that's the second worst, not the worst. Right? Oh, that's not even, no, that's, not, that's the third worst. That's the, that's third, the third worst. worst. We All got right. More, we got more worse. So yeah. So currently the attorney general is basically saying things like, if people were bleeding in the hospital parking lot, sue your doctor. It's like, well, the doctors wouldn't be doing this if you hadn't made a stupid law. Anyway. Again, third worst. Third worst. <laughs> second worst. Second worst. It's First runner up, second worst, is definitely the news story of the woman in Ohio who is being indicted, charged with a grand jury for flushing her miscarriage. She knew she was going to have a miscarriage. She was at the hospital. They were like, this isn't viable. You're going to have a miscarriage. She miscarried. The charge is what? Abuse of a corpse? Abuse of a corpse. Yes, abuse of a corpse. And it is because she flushed. She's getting charged with abuse of a corpse. She flushed. Um, It seems shocking to people that a lot of times people discover they have miscarriages on the toilet, it's a point when you sit down. Oh, oh, oh you? you know I about this? had a miscarriage at an Applebee's. Mm. Did and you flush? You know what I didn't do? Dig it out <laughs> of the toilet. I actually had, I had a miscarriage. But there is a story that I really 
want to tell because of this. And Halsey, the singer, wrote an article for Rolling Stone, and we'll put it in the show notes, about she was told that she was pregnant and that her pregnancy was not viable. She was probably going to miscarry. So she could either have an abortion or she could just naturally miscarry. And she had to do a big concert. They were like, okay, then what you should do is wear, you know, diapers and you may start miscarrying while you're performing. You may not, whatever. She does the show. She is in the airport after the show as she's leaving and has her miscarriage. And she miscarries and she was looking at the toilet at her products of conception, sort of trying to have a moment. And then the automatic flusher (laughs) just takes the whole thing. And she was like, well, I guess that is the non-divine intervention that has led me to this. But like, what happens now if they now have automatic flushers everywhere? Is that an accessory after the fact? Applebee's has an automatic flusher every airport? I don't know. Uh, maybe you should control your miscarriages. I, yes. I was going to say that. I did actually like two Googles like, what is the direction that one, one is supposed to do if they've experienced miscarriage at home with the products of conception? And it turns out there is none. Well, no, there is one. You, you put the products of conception into a tulip and then you give it a Viking... <laughs> A uh, funeral. Oh, surrounded my funeral. By, yes. It turns out, actually, Americans don't have any direction. England does. The National Institute of Health does have direction. And the direction they have is... Flush. You could simply flush. <laughs> it's oh, wow. actually, for real? What English said. Yeah, it says yeah. you could simply flush. So this woman followed British directions. It doesn't work in Ohio. But that is not... That is not the number one story. Moji. The, story. the oh number one God. story is... <laughs> drum roll, please. <laughs> The Miffy case in Amarillo, Texas. Yeah, oh, yeah, I could have guessed that one. Yeah. I, 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 first, yeah. before you break into the Miffy case, does anybody think there was another story that beat the story? I feel like you nailed it on number one. I feel like we wake up every morning wondering about the Miffy case, so I couldn't. Yeah, so get Moji, else. tell folks about why this is your story and explain to them what the story is. All right, so this is my story because the Miffy case is probably the most consequential abortion case. Uh, since the Dobbs decision, right? This case, if the Fifth Circuit has their way, will mean that the level of access that we've been afforded in this country to abortion pills, and Mifepristone particularly, so the first pill in the abortion pill protocol, would move from being available to people up to 11 weeks to seven weeks, which is essentially an abortion ban at seven weeks because- A national abortion ban. A national abortion ban because- Uh, It's the most common form of abortion management in this country right now. It's like 57% of all abortion procedures are medication. And so this essentially just says that really simple, really easy, really safe kind of abortion will be gone for everyone. So Moji, just lay out the timeline for folks so they can learn how all of this came to be. And then we have some thoughts. (laughs) Okay, so the timeline, just the, the high level timeline, August 2022, an organization springs, is conceived out of thin air in Amarillo, Texas. It's should called, have been aborted. It should have been aborted. It's called the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine. It formed in Amarillo, Texas for a really specific reason. And the reason it formed in Amarillo, Texas is because there is this judge in Amarillo, Texas. His name is Kasmarek. And he was placed there by President Trump. And he has a long and studied career of defending anti-trans rights, anti-gay rights, anti-abortion activism. And he is the only judge if you are in Texas, who will do federal cases. So you kind of know that you get him. Uh, He is not a scientist. He has no medical background. But he ruled in April 2023, that's this year, that the abortion pill that had been on the market for over 20 years, that is safe as fuck, that has almost less than 1% of complications in the millions of people who've used it, was wrongly approved by the FDA. So they handpicked Kazmarek for this case, for sure. But even he needs a reason to overturn an FDA approval of a medicine. And so they fed him this line. They reminded him of an old, dormant 1873 anti-obscenity law called the Comstock Law. Um, and he w- heard what it was, and he ran with it. So, But Molly, you got to tell people about just briefly about Comstock, because it's so weird. I literally am obsessed, so yes. You are so obsessed. <laughs> you know the most about So, Comstock. overview, okay, the Comstock Law is a purity law that banned mailing anything, quote-unquote, 
obscene. And Comstock's genius at the time was including abortion and contraception under the obscenity label. So it essentially banned abortion and contraception because if you can't send anything in the mail, you can't perform them, right? So no one has used this law for over a hundred years. It got struck down and struck down and struck down until it was basically... Uh, completely invalid. It's never been removed from the books, though. But it's never been removed from the books, which is really uh, fucking annoying. So basically, Comstock is just a random dude who worked at a dry goods store, who everybody wanted to punch in the face, literally, who thought that babies were fully formed at conception. And it's just really telling that these people are using his law to justify banning mifepristone from the market. I just want to say, too, we have been screaming, and so have many, many advocates for abortion. We've seen it in Wisconsin, too, with their pre-Civil War abortion ban. And we've been begging whenever they had a chance to have a majority to get these old laws off the books. And they were like, you're exaggerating. And it's like, now there's an old-ass federal law that could destroy abortion access. It's wild. And how do you do that? You get a guy who's a little unscrupulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Who's like, give me your reason. Give me your reason. You get a guy who wants to do it anyway, because Mm -hmm. that is very much who Kazmarek has presented himself as, Mm -hmm. a guy who's wanted to do this anyway. And they knew that, because when he was up for the job, he quietly and discreetly hid away millions of dollars. Yeah. We don't know where that investment is. We don't know where it's going. We of don't know where it's from. He also quietly and discreetly moved his name from documents. <laughs> yes. That would let us know how he feels about things. That's right. <laughs> and then he sailed through. So, okay. And so even his ruling, because he ruled, get rid of it. Not just let's go back to when it was approved, but let's get rid of this pill because it was rushed through yeah. and it's dangerous. Now, even SCOTUS and the Fifth Circuit was like, that seems a little wild but and so everybody but petitions go to us and was like okay this seems wild and scotus was like it is wild but go through the process so they argued before the fifth circuit right and the oral arguments in front of the fifth circuit were utterly bizarre first of all fun fact to know that josh holly's wife is the attorney for these horrible, unscrupulous anti representing doctors. Alliance Defending Freedom. Oh yes, yeah, she's That's a right. lawyer for Alliance Defending Freedom. I keep Freedom. forgetting she's from the, those dirt bags. <laughs> and first of all, I just don't understand who's going to anti-abortion doctors who would turn them in and have them jailed if they needed abortion care. But the part for me was their gotcha moment in their case that they when they laid out the case before these judges. And some of these judges make Kazmarek look like, you know, Clarence Darrow. They said that they presented three cases of people who had complications from medication abortion. And our side, the FDA, said all three of those cases were pills that people procured from India. So they weren't even pills that went through the FDA approval regimen. And still, the Fifth Circuit was like, sounds good to me. Well, mostly because they wanted to do this anyway, let's be honest. They were just waiting for a case to come, and they were like, how soon can we get our little knuckles on It's it? just, how do you do this with a straight face? The whole thing is such a joke. Yeah. It's cringe. It's cringe. And so finally, they were presented to... Three judges who were very sympathetic, a three panel thing of the of the Fifth Circuit. We had to wait for from May until August, August for their ruling. And then Moji, talk about what happened in the ruling in August. Oh, and the ruling, it was really fun. Essentially said, oh, Matt, you've gone too far. We can't not approve the whole medication. But since 2020, there have been two big changes to how the medication can be dispensed. And they were like, let's get rid of all of that. And we're back to 2000 which means you can only use it up to seven weeks. You have to get it in person. There's no telemedicine. Only doctors can prescribe it. All this stuff that makes it a little more onerous, makes it a little more expensive, makes it a little less helpful for people, and is essentially a seven-week ban Mm -hmm. on medication abortion, the most popular form of abortion care in this country. Okay, can we just stop right there for a second? And I want to just do a Miffy Minute to really talk about the wonders of Mifepristone. Yeah, I've got a Miffy Minute fun fact. Not for nothing, but over half of the abortions in the U.S. are medication abortions. So people have been and are signing up in droves for this shit because it works and it's safe and it's popular and cool. Yeah, and not just here, also, for my Miffy Minute fun fact, um, there are 80 countries where Mifepristone is approved, and in France, it's been approved since 1988. 
So when I was born, mifepristone was approved in France. And when I got my period, I could finally get it in the country I was born in. <laughs> yeah. And also they let you, you can take it at a later gestational age. And it's where it was invented. God bless the French. And also the World Health Organization actually includes mifepristone in their list of important essential medicines that should be available in all functioning health systems at all times, which means that essentially the GOP wants to drag us into the dark ages and out of having a functioning health system. I just want to say that. Also, you you know, you said more than half the abortions and I said millions, but just so we're clear, 5.2 million people have used mifepristone for medication abortion, and it's safer than aspirin. There's been, again, as I said, less than 1% of complications. And uh, Liz, how many deaths do you know? There's been a recorded 25 deaths that they have attributed to the use of mifepristone. 2,500? 25. 25. <laughs> that's what I thought. 25. That is a football game. <laughs> want to, that's as many people on a field for a football game. That's it. So in the Super Bowl, they could have all died from using Miffy, but you know, I'm just saying. All right. So those stats are why this is the worst case. And so, Moji, you were talking about this Matthew Kaczmarek and why these people chose. And and just to put a button on these people, they're literally all anti-abortion doctors and a dentist who no one is ever coming to for care. And there's also... Really fun bit, Molly, and remember that you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know him. We love him. I'm um, just kidding. We're disgusted. Judge James C. Ho. He's bad. He's, oh, he's bad. He actually dissented from the Fifth Circuit uh, decision. He agreed with Judge Kaczmarek that the they should just completely reverse the FDA's approval of medication abortion. So in his dissent... He presented one of the most unhinged reasons that he thought these anti-abortion doctors had standing to sue. He said that not being able to deliver babies is an aesthetic injury to the doctors. Is that a TikTok injury? Yeah. What, yeah. Let, let, me, let me just say it in his words because I, I couldn't even summarize it. You're going to think I'm lying. Okay. He said, unborn babies are a source of profound joy for those who view them. Expectant parents eagerly share ultrasound photos with loved ones. Friends and family cheer at the sight of an unborn child. Doctors delight in working with their unborn patients and experience an aesthetic injury when they are aborted. I've never seen an unborn child in my life. They got x-ray vision in the tummies. What is happening? Friends and family. <laughs> Absolutely unhinged. And his justification for this also was some law. Babies that- are cute is literally yes. what he said. <laughs> yeah. That is the legal, his legal reasoning. And then he slammed the gavel. But also, Molly, by rolling it back to 2000, they also agree with Kazmarek because the whole Comstock situation is you can't send obscene materials through the mail. And so if you roll back to 2000, it takes away the ability to get pills through the mail. Yep. And so you can say that you're more woke and we're not going to go that far, but you did go that far. You just didn't incite the guy with the bow tie and the crazy, you know, carpetbagger bags full of porn that he was traveling around with saying, isn't this terrible? No, the Fifth Circuit essentially is saying, not yet. We'll yeah. get there. Yeah. <laughs> and and Erin Holy kind of brought this up during the arguments. She was like, well, we're not banning all abortion. You can still get surgical abortions. And it's like, where? Actually, in Texas? Can. Yes. Yeah. And exactly. then we're going to places where you need pills. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. And they've That's also right. been using Comstock Law as a reason, as a justification to ban surgical abortions as well, because you need to send the instruments to do surgical abortions. through the mail so this is why the impact is like so far reaching so this is hands down the worst story of the year and last week the supreme court after four months of us waiting has announced they are going to hear the case in their next docket and will rule on it by summer so you can only imagine how much we will be talking about it so stay with us folks we got you And uh, that leads us to go to our best story. I mean, we need a best story. I was going to say, this is palate cleanser. This is a mental palate cleanser. Uh, (laughs) Alyssa, I think you're going to give us the best story. So let's go with the three, two, one, baby. Let's do it. My second runner up for the best story is back in July, the FDA approved 
over-the-counter birth control pill. Yay! So exciting. And there's kind of tied into the Mifepristone case why this is so important, because you're going to save people time and money accessing this necessary pill that you have to have. And like, if you need it now, what, you you got to figure out your insurance. You got to figure out your doctor. You got to go to the place. You got to get it. And also, the next step that these anti-abortion people are going for is getting rid of birth control. They're like, yeah, this is basically an abortion. If you get rid of the thought of having <laughs> giving birth, that's an abortion. And I want to say, too, like we prefaced earlier with poor Alyssa's stories, every good story has a yeah, but. Yeah. And the yeah, but on this is it is only one form of birth control, right? So if that particular pill, you know, gives you anxiety or whatever, you're kind of SOL, right? So it's it's where we want to get to is all the birth control pills should be over the counter. So, but it's a great first step. Yeah. Hopefully soon there'll be like penny candy at the store. Just on one of those papers that look like acid tests. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> that would I would keep it next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, first runner up, however, uh, we're getting better and better, is a nice recent one. We're in the state of Virginia next, where they elected a pro-choice majority. So that 15-week ban that they said was so sensible, just a cool little 15-week ban, never got the chance. Oh, the reasonable compromise ban? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the mm-hmm. you don't even know you're pregnant, but you can't even have an abortion ban. That's good. That, because Americans were like, we fucking see you. You can't say that at some point, at some week, all of a sudden it's like, I'm just fine with no government. And then at some week, it's like knock, knock, knock. And the tanks of the government just start driving up into your hoo-ha. <laughs> like, this is the week. They're this gonna keep the week. pushing it back a week. I like, know. Americans are way. like, no. Also, zero. what's really great about this is I remember reading the lead up to the election. They were like, and if he pulls this off, this will give a playbook to anti-abortion legislators of like how to put how to run on abortion. And Americans, at least Virginians, said, no, nah, we don't like that either. Boink. It was great. Great. It was really great. And and hopefully it means that, you know, people aren't falling f- falling for this. 15-week bans are sensible, and you should just, like, let us have them. And can we just say, as we get to the uh, numero uno, that no abortion ban is sensible? I just want to throw one. that out there in 2023 yeah. and 2024 and every no year limits. henceforth. No limits. No limits. There we go. Okay, no limit was, abortion. What is the number one story is, drumroll, please. <laughs> So happy about Ohio. And I mean, we've had so many great ballot initiative wins. And Ohio is great because it's so important because it's the first ballot initiative that was from conception, (laughs) took place post row. What happened was the antis pushed through their six week ban before and in anticipation of the Dobbs decision. And then when Roe fell, like so many states, Ohio was like galvanized to codify abortion in the state. So with this six week ban looming, you're setting an even higher stakes situation to enshrine abortion up to the point of quote unquote viability at 24 weeks. And I think that what's important to sort of have people know too is activists challenged the six week ban and it's now sitting in the Ohio state Supreme court. Right. So as they started the ballot initiative, this six week ban was heard by the Ohio Supreme court and it's looming. And I think that Ohioans were like, Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Well, they had lived under the six weeks ban for a few weeks, right? They, it yeah, actually yeah, went yep, into effect that's right, for a while. That's and right. so the other thing was Ohioans can be like, wait a minute, we know what it's like having a six week ban. Maybe we don't want to live in that world. And they got to see ballot measures win in Kentucky and Michigan and say, you know what? We can do this. We can get the eighth win on the books. And now moving forward, this sets a path for this to continue happening in places that are hostile to abortion. But we can get this in. And Dukes, as we have set you up, all good things happen until, but there's always the sneaky Pete's who are trying to undermine it. This didn't just sail through. A lot of shit happened to try to undermine this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, they were literally harassing canvassers verbally, physically barring people from getting information from the people who made this ballot initiative happen, which are the Ohioans. And then Moji, we can't mention this without mentioning the, uh, the trying to slide in and successfully sliding in the pre an extra election Election. an extra election yeah they were like what's wild about the extra election right ohio had just said you know what we don't need we don't need any more 
August elections. These are expensive. They take time. Then the ballot edition got some speed and they were like, oh, wait, 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 wait. We need a special election to change the threshold from a simple majority of 50 percent to 60 percent so that this ballot initiative will not pass. And so essentially, Ohioans had to vote for abortion twice this year. <laughs> you know what was really fun is six months before they'd done a poll and 57 percent of Ohioans mm-hmm. supported an abortion. How interesting. How interesting. Oh, and it yeah. passed with 57 percent. They knew exactly. Exactly yeah. where the line was. And it wasn't just advocates. It was actually disinformation put on, on the state websites. Oh, yeah. It's crazy what people have to go through just to vote and get their voices heard. They're throwing so much shitty pasta at the wall. For example, you have to read a summary of an amendment before you vote on it. Yeah. That summary has to be written by the Secretary of State or the AG. And in this case, in Ohio's case, their anti-abortion Secretary of State, Frank LaRose, was in charge of that. And it was just littered with references to the unborn baby instead of fetus. It just like was completely biased. And that's an incredible tactic to try and get your way, but these voters were not fooled. No. no. And the other thing they did was they tried to also do the like softer side of Sears version where it was like, <laughs> look, this this amendment's just really bad and it's going to like take parental rights away. So just don't vote for it. You know, like that's the whole thing. Nothing will change. If you vote against it, nothing will change. Acting Career like of this six Ikai. week ban wasn't looming and waiting to be decided upon by the Supreme Court. Widening through the court, yep. literally as it was happening. Yeah, had been heard, is sitting there, right? And so it is a very interesting time in Ohio. And there, as we go into 2024, we're going to definitely be talking about how even when you have a state that votes to enshrine abortion into their state, all of the dirty tricks that they have around trying to circumvent it like that's going to be i swear to you a constant theme as we go into 2024 mark my words um excellent i feel like ohio was a win i feel like you're great and now holy moly we are heading over to molly to say the most insidiously bizarro stories and i did not envy you in having to choose your three two ones but molly let's get to your three two ones who's coming in at third place friend coming in at third place for shit got weird is hold on let me back up a little bit and give you some context okay so last year you might remember the flight attendant at southwest airlines who spammed another employee over social media with images of bloody fetuses and other whack as fuck anti-abortion messages so she was fired because obviously it's a fireable offense so she sued and she won a very big settlement and the weird news is that this year that judge who gave her that big settlement Uh, the petty-ass, judicially unserious judge, he went the extra mile this year to sanction Southwest's lawyers, mandating that they go to a religious liberty training done by none other than the Christo-fascist hate group Say with me, the Alliance, Alliance for Defending, Defending Freedom. Freedom. Is that where Harley works? It <laughs> is the same wow. We're bringing it all back. One big shit circle. Um, they didn't just take that sitting down, did they? The lawyers? Currently, Southwest is appealing, which makes sense because why would you agree to go to a religious liberty training from one of the most non-neutral Christian extremist organizations out there? And what was messy was, you know, when Southwest was like, we're appealing the shit no way the judge waited and waited and waited to release any kind of ruling and they did it the night before these people had to go so some of them were en route to go but it's really unbelievable that you could force lawyers to have to what if you weren't christian or if you were queer. Every time this religious liberty shit comes up, it's like, it's only religious liberty if you're a Christo-fascist. Yes. And nobody yes. else gets it. Yeah, <laughs> and so to force your secular lawyers who work for a secular company to have to go through a tr- some sort of training that is, is head up by a, a law firm that if you aren't familiar with Lies for Defending Freedom, all they do is defend Christians who feel aggrieved because I think we all see that Christianity is just plummeting. Look around. There's no Christianity anywhere. So that is really wild. 
that story is a good third one. What's your second? So my runner up um, and this one, you know, should the winning story not be able to accept its award, <laughs> I shall present thee this deeply unhinged alternate. So this really got me so angry earlier this year. A volunteer nurse at a fake clinic in Kentucky was so appalled at the conditions inside the fake clinic that she became a whistleblower to expose the fact that they were using expired disinfectant on their transvaginal ultrasound wands. So So they put old shit in people's hooch? Old shit in people's hooch. Is that what you said? Old hooch in the cooch. Old hooch in the cooch. (laughs) Yeah, I think that 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 was her words exactly. (laughs) Old hooch in the cooch. They should not be sticking anything in anyone, first of all. Because they're not doctors or medical professionals. She was, actually. Fully not doctors. But, and she was just a volunteer who just happened to be a nurse. <laughs> yeah. They, they, you know, they have no doctors there, as you were saying, uh, but they're still happy to insert a crusty bacterial pepper mills up your vagina <laughs> at any moment. So she was so appalled that she went to the press because she found that no one would pay attention. She couldn't get the fake clinic to change when she asked them to, so she had to go to the press because, the, as we know, there are no fucking regulations on these clinic, on these fake clinics. That's what got me, that she had to go through so many people that she was like, okay, I'm going to go to the state. And the state was like, ah, we don't license them. We can't regulate them. They're not a clinic, which just goes back to the whole like, oh, you can cosplay clinic and do whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. Whereas a real medical facility has standards. And these places are unregulated, but not unfunded. Because that is your taxpayer money that is not paying someone to check expiration dates on these things. (laughs) And what's crazy about this also was that these transvaginal ultrasounds, what 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 the hooch did not do was protect you from HPV. Oh. And HPV causes cervical cancer a lot of the fucking time. Way more than abortion does. Way more. Which is more what they'll tell abortion, you at a fake clinic. And that's when not. that's when the disinfectant is not expired. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. At its exactly. peak, <laughs> at its peak efficiency, it does not eliminate risk for HPV. Well, and to be clear, this is a person who was an anti-abortion nurse who heard all of the propaganda that we have heard from fake clinics, how they help people and help guide people and abortion minded people into choosing something else. And so this person went in to bring their nursing skills to a fake clinic, thinking that they were a real clinic and learn the hard way. I mean, we've gone undercover into these fake clinics and heard the stories they tell. We have video of it. And so to, to have this person who is actually one of the few medical professionals bringing to the people who run the clinic or the parent company oftentimes of these clinics and they're being like, la, 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 nothing to see here, moving along. Not to mention the fact that there was expired shit that was supposed to prevent the HPV, but also the disinfectant they were using was for external use only for abdominal ultrasounds, yeah. not for internal ultrasounds. And so, ew. Like, I don't even know. Ew. There are right? no words. Yeah. Except for hooch in the cooch and moonshine also, in the poonshine. I, I just, just thought of that And one. this place is still up and running. I was going to say, the other part about this is I actually tried to do follow-up like, huh, this story we read in like March or something. What's happened since then? Crickets. No idea what's happening at this place. She mm. named and shamed them, but like... They're still putting lice on everybody. Lice. Okay. <laughs> so I just have to say, if putting not for internal use salves on your transvaginal probe by a fake clinic volunteer and then using expired uh, non-helping preventing HPV shit and putting it into uh, unsuspecting people's vaginis. Um That's not the worst story of the year. What the fuck is Molly? What is, please? Drum roll. Okay, the winner. The story. Winner for the weirdest wacky abortion story of the year goes to, you won't be surprised, Texas. <laughs> Doing some wacky stuff over there. Uh, specifically, State Senator Bob Hall, who proposed a bill to make sure that Foods that contain fetal tissue are clearly labeled. Labeled? That's right, labeled emoji. Senate Bill 314 says that any food product that contains is manufactured with or is derived from research that uses, quote, 
tissues, cells, or organs obtained from an aborted, unborn child, unquote, must be clearly and conspicuously labeled before it can be sold in stores. I want to also say aborted, unborn child just seems like a whole lot of double negatives in there. That doesn't <laughs> aborted, seem, unborn. It just doesn't really make sense. Flamin' fetus. <laughs> hot, hot flamin' fetus. So, uh, Mal, did this pass? No, it did not. Wow. Hey, <laughs> Texas All rumors start from a vague kernel of a thing. So what is the vague kernel of a thing that sound the five alarm fire about fetuses all over everything (laughs) we eat? Well, let me take you back to the year of our Lord, 2012. Okay, so in this year, food companies wanted to find a way to become more accurate in flavoring foods. So... Uh, When flavors are added to food, at each step, they are tested by professional food testers who detect levels of things like sweetness and heat, etc. So humans do a pretty good job, but each person is different. So scientists wanted to create an artificial taste receptor uh, that, as they add flavors, would be more accurate about the moment they begin to notice the taste. Now, the receptor was engineered from a perpetual DNA strain from a fetus. They've been testing this strain since the 1970s. It's very common. So this fact... This kernel has been twisted into the perpetually outraged saying that companies are putting fetuses in your muscle milk and slim gyms. This thing, whole thing is so bizarre to me. Let's just start from the get-go of they need the f- to be labeled and not... Ba- Why don't you ban yeah. fetuses in foods? <laughs> Instead of, you're not going to take it out of the foods. We just want to let people know what's in there. And so who's that for? People who are like, you know, I want more to introduce more fetus in my diet. Yeah. And it's just not on the label. So I if think I it's could paleo. just know. Yeah, if I could know. It's <laughs> paleo. You want to be able to put it in your Apple Watch. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> or is there a reaction you have to fetus? Like you can gluten allergic. or lactose. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to walk into a restaurant and be like, um, you told me there wasn't any fetuses in this food. And I'm allergic. And I don't have my EpiPen. <laughs> what am I? I don't want to be that person, but so I have to set it back. the labeling, is it legal to put fetus in food? No. (laughs) So this is why you know these people are garbage. And this, like, and so 2023, in as Molly said, the year of our Lord, has been wild claims of fetuses in everything. It's like, hey, look in your fridge. There's probably a fetus right there. They've said there's fetuses in everything. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I think that... um, some groups have spent a lot of time this year just reminding people that there's fetus in our water. There's mm. fetus in our water. Mm. And the abortion pill doesn't make it better, but there's fetus in our fetus water. Fetus in our water, abortion pills in our water. Yeah, abortion pills yeah, in our water. Yeah, that's why you can't flush your miscarriages, because apparently we have no mechanisms for cleaning our water. Actually, a representative in um, Virginia did say flushing fetal remains is a reckless and disgusting practice. So I'm just what kidding. about I'm flushing unclear. poop? I'm unclear I mean, I about feel like flushing poop is more not awesome. about poop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, way more. More, more concerned about poop. I, I love their concept of the water cycle. They're like, you pee, it goes into the sky, and then into our eyeballs. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All we can do. Yeah, I mean, the fil- their their relationship to filtration feels really sketchy. Unsung. Reproduction yeah. and filtration. Exactly. Water treatment facilities. Who is yeah, she? I mean, that just is it's just some next level because I don't think I've ever gotten like fetus poisoning. Like I've gotten, I, there's been some sketchy people handling my lettuce where I've been like, I watched you go to the bathroom and I don't think it was you were handling fetuses and then came back and made my salad. Fairly certain you did some wipe and tripe and uh, <laughs> shit was not great. And then there's also the... Um, the old chestnut, Alyssa. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, this This didn't happen this year, but in relationship to all of these things is don't forget, a few of our friends think that fetuses are powering our electricity. Mm. <laughs> they said that in Congress. and yeah. then, It's part of the national record. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, you can go look it up right now. And um, as if as if like half an inch of cooch goo could charge a whole iPhone. I feel like that is just <laughs> not how that works. Uh, I mean, I feel like, first of all, if we could run America on fetal tissue, I'm like, I'm here for it. It seems clean. Yeah. I mean, it feels like, you know, we could have gotten rid of Joe Manchin long ago. (laughs) You know, when people, this clean coal, they fucking threw that chestnut out there. Clean fetus. America runs on clean fetus. I like it. Not Duncan. Also, America does not. And it's wild that people believe that there is. How? fetus do you need there's a the woman said 
the city of Washington D.C. Yeah. is and Baltimore, and Baltimore is being run solely by fetus power. Why am I paying so much for my electricity bill? <laughs> exactly. If I'm contributing, exactly my abortions, <laughs> I want a rebate. These are good stories. These are a lot. Did we miss anything? Yes, we missed so much. But who has the time? I know. I feel like <laughs> we don't have the time. Um, we'd so be here all year. We'd be here all year. So if you're like, oh, my God, I've only heard one of those stories or I've heard none of those stories. That is why we exist, because at FBK, it's our mission to be a reliable hub of info and a source of humor, because there is so much dark shit that to be able to have somebody every week be able to set the record straight, bring some clarity is important. So as we uh, wrap up this year and go into 2024, just know that we got you with facts. And as always, all of these stories are in the show notes. And you can find the best, most up to the minute resources on accessing abortion care and funding your care on our website, aafront.org. Our Charlie Chabot on the bottom right will walk anyone anywhere in the country through their options and resources for abortion. That's right. That is the wrap up of the news. Coming up, we are going to do some gift giving. All right. It is a holiday tradition here at FBK to play Secret Satan. The four of us throw our names in a hat and we each draw one and then we take to the Internet and we scour for the perfect fantasy gift that if money were no option, Satan himself would hand pick it. As each person gets to the gifts, I want you to go to the show notes and listen so that you can follow along because the gifts are really magical. So um, I get to start and I'm very excited. My secret Satan person is Molly. Wow, I'm thrilled. And I want to indulge your joy of travel. I wanted to be able to get you something that you could do with your lovely partner, Layla. And I wanted to get you something you could do to get a break from the cold in New York. So feel free to click it on. It's three days in Arizona this February. Wow. wow. Um, and it's a three-day excursion. On day one, it's the truth about the Grand Canyon tour. Mm -hmm. And I know you love whitewater rafting. <laughs> and so what it is is every trip on the tour is with Canyon Ministries. <gasps> And it makes the Bible come alive through the exciting and engaging teaching of creationism so you can learn the true way that the Grand Canyon was formed, which through the biblical floods, That's which I weird. know, which I know is like really yeah. important for you because I know how much you love whitewater rafting. That's why they call it God's gash. Right. And so I was going I wanted to make sure that you were um, also had your accommodations taken care of. And so on day two, nestled in the Hampton Inn on Litchfield Road in the Phoenix <laughs> suburb of Goodyear Fancy. is the Bible Museum. You can get a can of Pringles and a Hot Pocket and grab the tour of this hidden gem. You'll see the original Bible from room 311. <laughs> <laughs> and What's the significance of 311? Well, on the seventh day, God dropped the book in 311. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, rare works of other famed Arizona theologians. It's so rare and fine that they don't even list their names on the website. So <laughs> it's very exciting. So at the Hampton Inn, you have this really special find. And then on your last day, I also know, Molly, that, I mean, I was at your wedding and activism was such a big part of your wedding. Even, you know, it's just really cool to have you talk about your love of protecting access and how that really worked into who you are. And so on February 19th, at the Stone Creek Golf Club, you'll be able to take a stand or a swing for life uh, in Arizona at the Save the Storks Golf Tournament Ooh. and fundraising uh, opportunity. It's that uh, they need to raise $75,000, Molly, to further the mission of Save the Storks <laughs> to get even more fake clinic vans out there. Um, so it's your chance to golf, raise some money for fake clinics, save the storks. I think it'll be an adventure of a lifetime. Oh my for God. You. I oh mean, this gosh. is thrilling. These people might remember my face. From, <laughs> I was going to say, we only from, protested them once. Yeah. I, I, me and my lesbian wife are going to be thrilled to go on this <laughs> yes. biblical tour. I mean, I mean, it's really just like how much Grand Canyon propaganda have you gotten from fucking geologists I mean, <laughs> and all these other people? Nothing like, finally, can be that old. Finally, the truth about how the Thank Grand Canyon was formed. Thank you You're so welcome, much. And I, my my favorite part is that the, this um, this museum is nestled in a Hampton Inn. <laughs> <laughs> 
nestled in the Hampton Inn behind the Pringles and yeah. Hot Pockets. Uh-huh. Is- uh, it just sounds cozy, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, it's a lot, so I would say take a nap. You know, it's a go, go, go weekend. Yeah, I mean. um, you know me so well. And thank you so much. This holiday season is going to be like no other. I'm very excited that I can uh, um, do wow. that. Wow. So, well, We'll I, put these links also, all the links for all of these fantastic. Okay. So you too, you too can join any one of them, us on these. In I actually fully want to go on this Grand Canyon thing. But, yeah. um, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to top that, but I will give it my holiday all. Um, so my person, I was lucky enough to get Alyssa. Oh, yay. yay. Oh my God. So excited. Okay, now I've gotten to work with you basically every day for a couple years now, so I know you like the back of my hand. Of course. And I, I I love you. And with those migraines, I see how much you suffer. And I know you've tried a lot of remedies, um, but this year I thought I would give you the gift of free advice. And... <laughs> And a couple of things that I'm sure you probably haven't tried. Now, migraines can kind of feel like wearing a crown of thorns, right? Hey, that's exactly what it feels like. Right, right. So why not channel Sky Daddy for a little help with those splitting headaches? So here, my first gift, if you want to open this little link here, I got you for, I know that the light can be really bother you, God's Creation sunglasses. Oh, oh wow. It's got the thorns oh. on the arm sticks. Just the four thorns. <laughs> Just for a wow. little. They're extra. half off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Black Friday sale. I bought them at full price. <laughs> I think the 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 hands, the Sistine Chapel hands on the top are Thank probably you. what sells it Just for me. Imagine me, oh one hand, gosh. you the other, fingers slightly touching. <laughs> You know, I, I also like that you can sort of just cut your hair into a mullet at any point with the side of those glasses. Oh, and Lenny Kravitz wearing them is really awesome in the picture. That Only nice. the best. Now, so my second remedy, I know that they say to put your face in an uh, in an ice bath. Okay. Or, so I, I got you a real nice vintage Pyrex fetus bowl here. Oh. Please, I thought you might actually have seen these. These are Pyrex... Um, vintage bowls that accidentally printed what looked like fetuses all over the side. Hilarious. Um, Do you know what they were supposed to be? They were like, this is just a shape. I think fruit. <laughs> <laughs> of the womb. Must it be? <laughs> um, but really, my main gift here today... Oh, I um, love this. I'm just... I'm just you know, my, my theme is health for you. I really want you to be your best. Um, I care about you and your body is an earthen vessel, as we know. <laughs> Can I just, just say waiting. one thing? <laughs> These look like the seven dwarfs on this Pyrex. <laughs> I just got the Pyrex open. I'm a little bit behind. This does not look like, look, it does not look like just droopy or what, what is that? Droopy is not a like dwarf. one of the seven it's dwarves. Not. Droopy? There's not <laughs> okay, a that's the dog. All right. Oh. Anyway, I'm sorry, Molly. This is why these were discontinued because yeah. they don't believe this is what that, they believe, believe that fetuses are okay, fully so developed. I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't mean to. I didn't no, mean to. Please, okay. um, What's the third one? Okay, so something. the third sorry. one. Um, now I know you also partake um, in smoking a little ganja, and I'm just. I'm just, it is smoke, and I'm a little worried about you because, Aww. you know, your your body is an earthen vessel. So if you, <laughs> uh, just to remind you of how precious no. your body is. <laughs> this is. No. <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh, my God. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Susie smoked. <laughs> that's First of right. all, that's literally me. <laughs> So what we're looking at here, folks, uh, it's this doll uh, or uh, figure. It's called Sm- uh, Smokey Sue Smokes for Two. <laughs> and what it is, it's a doll head with a c- cigarette in its mouth. I can't. Attached to a jar with a fetus in it, um, in its own. Seven month fetus. Seven month, what, what looks to be like a seven month fetus. It actually looks like a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> it does. A depressed teenager. Yeah. Which is when I started I smoking, it which you, is perfect. Exactly. Um, I, I hope you know I am turning this into a bomb. <laughs> like, God damn it. The whole reason is she smokes and you can see the effect in the glass with the with the fetus of the what what the woman says is tar so it's it, it's supposed to teach you not to smoke because the fetus swimming in the fetus jar of water is going to be smoking the exact same smoke that you do so listen i'm just concerned oh my god i just want to also say it's three hundred dollars <laughs> oh, um, molly i really want to know how you have found this i'm impressed yeah what, what did you I google what down. did you google <laughs> to find this. 
I don't know. I took an Ambien. I blacked out. I woke up, and this was staring me in the face. <laughs> And now I get to wake up to it every day as a reminder. It's five inches by 14 by five. It's so tall. It's, it's, it's tall. It's oh. a big jar of, uh, of it, it just kind of like, it's just inexplicable. The haunted look in its eyes is really what sells it for oh, me. Oh, freckles. is terrifying. It's like a strawberry that short. would not birth that fetus. Yeah. Those are different species. <laughs> This is like three different kind of OnlyFans page yes. in one container. Correct. It's like plushy. It's like uh, child weirdness. It's uh, like, I don't know. Oh, my God. Uh, Molly, um, thank you so much. That's yeah. incredible. That is very incredible. cool. That is lovely. Yeah, that is incredible. Oh, it my gosh. Lovely. Okay, wow. I'm so excited for, for my gift is next. And i um, super excited because I got to give a gift to Moji. I, I got to give a gift to Moji. for this, Alyssa. I've waited my whole life for you to give oh me a gift. Oh, my gosh. I had so much fun shopping for you because um, we have a couple of similar interests. And I know that there are a couple of, like, running jokes that we have mm-hmm. that I'm very, er, like, excited to bring to your gift. So, first up of your gift, overall, it is a trip to see your boyfriend, Daniel Cameron. <gasps> Oh. I'm going to Kentucky. You're going to Kentucky. <laughs> You're going to Kentucky. So I got you the Daniel Cameron um, golf set. Fuck yeah. So that you can play golf while you're there. Yes. It all goes in a Daniel Cameron tote bag. You can drink <laughs> your beverage out of a Daniel Cameron koozie and wear your mom's for Daniel Cameron hat so that everybody knows. Oh, let me- Dream. Oh my god, how much you love him. These this are also so limited perfect. edition because he is not running for shit right now. That's I was very <laughs> surprised that the website was still active. <laughs> I really like that there's two golf situations yeah, yeah, yeah. happening here. Because here we can team up. We can team Save up. Because I'm a golf girly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but what are you going to do every morning when you wake up in Kentucky and you need to get your day started? Drink some seven weeks coffee, which is a pro-life coffee brand. Oh. And I've picked the Columbia roast. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. 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 You can place it as a 24 weeks of abortion access? Not for these coffee beans. They don't. These coffee beans were harvested um, at the height of viability. <laughs> Just for your pleasure. And so oh my gosh. when I typed pro-life coffee into Google, I was like, no fucking way. Yeah. Oh seven seven weeks too. This seven weeks the coffee. Perfect ban. The perfect mm. ban. Oh my gosh. Nice. Drip ban. The yeah. drip, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then your final gift, because you and I are both sci-fi lovers, I wanted to get you something that combines your love of science fiction with the wonders of the pro-life movement. So I found a story by Philip K. Dick that you can't find anywhere anymore in a magazine called The Pre-Persons. Oh. That came out in 1973. So according to Wikipedia. 1973. 1973. Right after Roe. In a suspicious year. Right after Roe. He was like, you know what we need? We need a fake situation where people can't access abortion. I'm going to do that. So here's the rundown from Wikipedia. Dick imagines a future where the United States Congress has decided that abortion is legal until the soul enters the body. The specific instant is defined by the administration the moment a person has the ability to perform simple algebraic equations. Wow. So by their standards... Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, 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 I, sin? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you well. can abort me now because I, <laughs> I was going to say like, I would I would be aborted immediately. <laughs> um, so there is a copy, a link to the copy of the full story. I will read it. Will no, I will genuinely read it. read it though. This is incredible. <laughs> I'm so. Oh my gosh, to this is Daniel Cameron. You know, is my heart and my joy, and just really the the politician that makes that makes me do the work that I do. You know what I mean? So it's really exciting to know that I can have all of his merch. I'm so <laughs> from his failed It's probably cheaper now, too. You can yeah. probably get more. So this failed <laughs> gubernatorial bid. Yeah, it makes me merch. super excited. This is so good. But I will, in fact, actually read. Wait, there's conservative ASMR. That was my bonus prize. <laughs> it's just him reading the Babylon Bee like this. <laughs> Oh He's my like, God. I don't, I don't think, I don't think women should have rights. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yes. That'll put me to sleep. Oh my God! Yes. Well, I guess it's my turn to talk yes. about my gift. Yes. And I think if you guys are following along, deductive reasoning would lead you to believe that I have Ooh. Liz. 
And, you know, I really thought long and hard about this gift because, you know, you're a person that's just hard to give gifts to. But I realize you, as the head of this organization and leading us through the, our, our merry band of activists, um, that maybe you could use some help. And it turns out that Jordan Peterson has a Discovering Personality course. Oh. It's, yeah, and it's on sale right now. Oh, it's um, on sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's an eight-module personality course. Oh. Where Jordan Peterson, Meet Sweats himself, will talk you through the psychology of personality. Does he help me <laughs> define mine by his lack of And his big five. <laughs> the big five, yep, yeah, maybe. And so he has the Understand Yourself license, there's some supporting material and a lively members only discussion group. Ooh, but he's got a Discord. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Jordan Peterson and Discord. So, wow. Like, this is almost as good as going on a Christian mingle thing to Alaska, but instead from the from the privacy of your own home, you can really learn about personality from the man who can teach us everything we need to know about personality. And meat. And meat. Uh, and then I also was like. That's fine, right? But we kind of need something, something that you can't put money on, right? Something, an object that is like priceless. So it turned out Candace Owens wrote a book called Blackout. Oh. And it's oh, talking dear. about how black people should leave the Democratic Party. The book itself seems mid, but the priceless element is that I'm going to hire Candace herself to follow you around your apartment and read the book to you. Oh, <laughs> oh because I just felt like that's something that like you would never buy yourself, you know? No, and, and something, that's something I've always wanted is to, to just be walk around your apartment having Candace Owens <laughs> bark at me. Reading her book her about black people. Oh my God. <laughs> if only I had other black people in my life who I wish, could tell me about black people. I wish you did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It'd be nice. Thank you for giving me the gift of a black person. Yes. Yes. I feel like that's a, a, a black person following you around your house. Okay. This seems vaguely Comstock. Well, uh, Except the fucking gift, Liz. Okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you for my. Present emoji. I cannot wait to have Candace Owen follow you around your house. Follow me around my yeah. house, and then yeah. I'm going to send her to your house to tell you about gotcha. how, all the ways you're not being a very good black woman. So I'm going to pay double nice. for you so that you can actually learn from the best. Priceless. Mm. Just simply Priceless. the best. Oh my yes. god, this was so fun. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Any final thoughts? I think we should do if we have can run mm. it the best and the worst. And the weirdest predictions for 2024 <laughs> before we close out? What do you think? It's I got a weird prediction. Yeah? Uh, you guys know pro-life Spider-Man? <laughs> uh, no, but why don't you tell people about pro-life Spider-Man? Uh, uh, yes, but I think you should still tell okay, people. Okay, pro-life Spider-Man is a, a young lad, uh, an agile lad who likes to scale buildings to proclaim his love for unborn babies and um, the anti-abortion movement. My prediction is he's going to fall off one of those buildings. <laughs> Doesn't sound very That is weird. To me. That is a deep a weird deep dive, Molly. I think he's going to fall. It also ball. sounds a little bit like a wish list. It does. <laughs> it really does. This is a prediction to be clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Judge Okay. Um, Just Molly was never in the vicinity of pro life yeah. Spider Man ever. No, He's been drinking a lot of that ultra right beer. Oh yeah, he likes so, to pop one when he's done climbing. Yeah, he. Uh, Dukes, you got a you got a good. I got a good. You know, and it's back to ballot initiatives. We are looking towards all the states who are getting ready to put forward more ballot initiatives. We want to see those wins. We're looking at you, Missouri. Yeah, Ooh. I like it. Moji. Oh, Daniel Camden is going to run for Senate or something. Oh. <laughs> I yeah, mean, I think yeah, with yeah, with uh, yeah. with you know, Mitch McConnell's gonna keep with, glitching, yeah, he's gonna and Daniel have, Kenwin's yeah. gonna slide in there and be like, if I can't be your governor, I'm gonna give another reason that Moji can't talk about him on the pod. Okay, it's I like be, it. It's about me. It is. I like it. Um, do I have a weird or a good or a? I don't really. I would say I'm gonna predict that in 2024 we're gonna have to work harder than ever because the world has changed so profoundly since. October 7th that I think that um, we're going to have to work a lot harder for peace and a lot harder for equality. And so what I'm going to say is we all just need to step up more and we'll be able to do that with your friends at Abortion Access Front because we have all kinds of shit we can offer up to help make this world a better place. And with that, that's our show. Oh my God, that was the year. 
It was just a portion of the year, actually. And it's the end of the year. So I just want to say thank you to my dear, dear people who I have the honor of working with every day, Moji Dukes and Molly, and to my team at Abortion Access Front. I love you. And to you, dear listeners, who have been with us and helped us grow and have supported us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But of course, there can never be enough support. This is my last plea before we hit 2024 for you to be able to donate some of your hard, hard hard-earned money and put it in our cold, cold kitty coffers uh, so that we can continue the work we do here at FBK and at Abortion Access Front. You know what we do. You know we're out there in these streets and over these airwaves every single day and week. So if you can rub two nickels together and shove them in the coffers, please do it. AAFront.org slash give AF link in the show notes. While you're doing some <laughs> finger jockeying, like, subscribe, and show us some love with a five-star review. That's right. Just stay connected on social media and all the places at Abortion Front and turn that arrangement into engagement. Yeah, and you can do that inside and outside of your computer. If you're looking for where you might fit in to do some abortion activism, we've got a five-part activist training series called Operation Save Abortion at OperationSaveAbortion.com. Visit our super cool activist calendar, which is full of local and national actions and educational opportunities. Yes, for example, if you want to support some real clinics this holiday season, you can purchase some of their much needed items off their wish list by heading over to our Adopt a Clinic page on our website. We'll be taking a couple of weeks off, but we'll be back in the new year to catch you up on what you missed with our take on the latest abortion news. That's right. And I, if you are in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, I'm doing two shows December 30th and 31st at the Parkway Theater. It's kind of a good catharsis to just like purge out and laugh out the year with some really fun graphics, some good sound bites, and a whole lot of rage. And if you love what you heard us do here today, join our Patreon. You'll support great content and get cool FBK merch and experiences. All pledges support this pod and all of our activism at Abortion Access Front. Pledge at patreon.com slash feminist buzzkills. FBK is edited by Remy de Tournay and is produced by Abortion Access Front. That's right. And we're closing out. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please have a safe holiday season. We cannot wait to see you in the new year. And finally, we leave you with a throwback to one of our faves of 2023, host of Fox's Outkick, Charlie Arnold, a woman showing us her whole ass and the fact that she has never heard of water treatment facilities. Happy New Year! Happy Holidays! Happy New Year! Happy New Year. My biggest piece of advice, ladies, for the love of God, stop drinking tap water. Tap water is effectively birth control because it has birth control in it. Because, well, it's just how it goes. Women pee and they are peeing out their medication. So, yes, men, also, you need to definitely listen up. This is a big heads up for you because also this estrogen in the water that you are drinking, the tap water, is also going to mess with your hormones. Feminist Buzzkills, the podcast from Abortion Access Front. New episodes drop Friday. When BS is popping, we pop off. And if you want to support our podcast and all the work of Abortion Access Front, like, subscribe, and join our Patreon at patreon.com slash feminist buzzkills.